911. I just, I just heard a woman screaming, no, don't, don't stop. And she's just screaming at the top of her lungs. Nobody ever thought something like this would happen at the Iron Horse Park Trail in Centerville. Never heard someone scream like that before. Some of her hair, Gemma's hair that was found here. I remember the day leading up very well. Gemma was out walking the trail. I had no idea that my life was going to change that day. She was walking one way and remembered Johnny Hansen coming from the other direction. So that day I was on my phone, I had my earbuds in. She said she looked up at him but never gave it a second thought. Never saw the rubber mallet he was holding. Later, Hansen told police that was when he turned around and started following her. I know that there was one point that I was just like being goofy and I, I saw a flower and I like took a picture with the flower. Gemma weighed about 100 pounds. Hansen, 353 pounds. And I think that's why he picked her is she was she was someone that was small that he could actually catch up to and, and overtake her pretty quickly. Hansen told police he swung the rubber mallet, hit Gemma in the head, and knocked her to the ground. I fought and screamed with all my might, but I just yelled for my life because I had no other option. He hit Gemma again and again, but she never dropped her cell phone. My first instinct was to try to use Siri on my phone. He hit her head again. And at first I was saying, call dad, call dad. And I was saying, call 911, call 911. But that was like in between screams and like trying to get him off me. So that wasn't working. But she kept fighting. She was getting up, trying to get away and, and just screaming for her life. Then another blow to the head. Everyone says I did the right thing. And while wow, that feels good to hear, I didn't, I had no idea I was doing the right thing. A man named Chris was standing in his driveway 30 yards away. He could not see Gemma, but he heard her screams and he went toward them. And then my savior, Chris, came down. Gemma told investigators. He was my angel and to this day, I believe he saved my life. I told Johnny to, to get away from her and Johnny hit her one more time and then stopped, turned around and just slowly walked away. Here is a picture Chris took of Hansen, showing exactly as Gemma described it. He had the mallet in his left hand and her blood all over his right, up his arm. Gemma said she was in shock and she did not remember feeling any pain as Chris called 911. Come quick. What he did that day for you, what, what did he do that day? He saved my life. <laughs> like, he came down there and I just remember that was like the best moment of my whole life. I grabbed onto him, the back of his shirt. Like, I was like, you're mine now. I just grabbed onto him and I wouldn't let go. You're a six, seven, three. Okay, hold on, it's okay. How old do you think she is? How old are you? 17. Officers swarmed the area and then this caller to 911. When I looked out in the backyard, or the side of the house, and it was just a big guy with a red shirt black hair, carrying a, a big rubber hammer mallet. Yes, and, uh, uh, where is he right now? He is at Iron Horse Park. It was Hanson, and officers arrested him. How does one human being walk up unprovoked for what I would say no good reason and strike another person the way he did? Detective Gershbacher will never forget what that day did to her personally and professionally. When you got to the hospital and you saw Gemma, Explain to me what went through your mind. Um, I mean, she was she was covered in blood. She looked like she had just been through a war, um, almost something like out of a movie. I received stitches in my head, 90 in total, to close 11 major head lacerations. When investigators questioned Hansen at a different hospital, they took evidence photos. Gemma's blood was still on his nails and under his cuticles. They asked, why did he attack Gemma? He wanted someone else to feel the pain uh, that he was feeling. Hansen said that pain he felt was from the way others had treated him the last several years, and he told investigators. He would have kept hitting her had a person not showed up. Had he not come, he could have killed the victim. 
I go back to my earlier statement. It's just hard to imagine that another human being can be that cold and heartless. But then later he told police killing the victim was not his intention. He just wanted to hurt her. <laughs> he picked the wrong girl. Gemma can still remember what she kept telling herself as Hanson kept hitting her. Hold your eyes open, hold your eyes open, hold your eyes open. And I mean, thank God that I knew that because if I would have gone unconscious, it could have and would have gotten so much worse. After the attack, Gemma said she struggled with the emotional wounds, but intensive counseling, therapy, and her parents' support slowly helped her start to put her young life back together. The only way I feel about it is I survived. Everyone is, they praise me for, you're so strong, you're the strongest girl I know. Again, that's something I like to hear. It feels good, but I 10,000% don't always feel like it. There are days where all I could do was get through. Her physical wounds have healed. You can hardly tell where the mallet opened up her head almost a dozen times. But Gemma knows they are there, and so are the emotional scars. But after all Gemma's been through, she said she is a stronger person. What good has come from this? Um, one of my favorite things is when people especially young girls tell me, because of you, I pay more attention. Gemma is a true believer. God put her on that trail that day, gave her the strength, the will, and the fight to survive so she could share her story and help others. And so if I can get one girl to just pay attention, I saved one girl, I, I made a difference. Mm -hmm.